Ethereum's about to go through some changes. Let's talk about it. Ethereum's upgrading from, I guess, Ethereum 1 to Ethereum 2, but I don't think they go by Ethereum 2.0 anymore. But the upgrades are still happening. So upgrading Ethereum to new radical heights is what the site says, going from proof of work to proof of stake, when before you had to have all people are chosen by random, and then there, um, there's a bunch of people called validators, and they actually check. And what they do is they have to stake 32 Ethereum when they stake 32 Ethereum, then they're put into a pool of people of, to be chosen. And if they get, get things wrong, then it's going to cost a piece of their stakings. So there's skin in the game. So before there wasn't really skin in the game, they just kind of got paid. So this is a lot more desirable that, you know, you're not just having just anyone that has the computer power to do so. Also, it's going to be a lot easier. They think that specialized um, specialized computers won't be as necessary in a, like a year and a half. So this is a great deal. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the things that the website says now. So it's going to be more scalable. Ethereum needs to support a thousand of transactions per second. To this applications faster, this will make applications faster and cheaper to use. More secure. Ethereum needs to be more secure as the adoption of Ethereum grows, the protocols protocol needs to become more secure against all forms of attack, more sustainable. This is one of the big things. Uh, everyone's talking about how we need a lower energy use. Ethereum needs to be better for the environment. The technology today requires too much computing power and energy. The way I've heard it is like uh, the energy that's using is like enough to power five million or it's just incredible. So there's three stages. This uh, beacon chain is already live. The beacon chain brought stake into Ethereum, laid the groundwork for the future upgrades and eventually coordinate the new system. So to my understanding, basically everything's kind of prepared. It's like, it's kind of laid out um, parallel to the chain that's already done. So basically it just needs to kind of be merged over, which uh, is estimated this year. Some say it's been said June and it's also been said as late as August. So the merge, Ethereum will need to merge with the beacon chain at some point. This will enable staking for the entire network and signal the end of energy intensive mining. As I was saying, saving energy. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and click it. So the merge. Eventually the current Ethereum mandate will merge with the beacon chain proof of stake system. This will mark the end of proof of work for Ethereum and full transition to proof of stake. This is planned to precede the rollout of shard chains. We formally referred to this as Docker. It's gonna be more scalable. Um, they're gonna be able to do more at a time, security and sustainable. It is important to remember the initial, initially the beacon chain shipped separately from the mainnet. The chain we use today, Ethereum continues to be secured by proof of work. Ethereum like Bitcoin currently uses a consensus protocol proof of work that allows not nodes of Ethereum network to agree on the state of all information recorded on the Ethereum blockchain and prevents certain kinds of economic attacks. Over the year, proof of work has phased out of our favor phased out in favor of proof of stake. So when it when everything basically started, proof of work was basically the, it, it was gonna be, I mean, it has been very valuable. It's been, it's been the method to be used. It was the way of the future back in the day. Now we've transitioned from that because 
it's it's just not scalable. It's it's too slow. Um, you have to go through all these different people and all these different transactions to do anything. But with proof of stake, um, you're able to do multiples at a time, and it's not as um, like I said, you're not going to have a to have specialized computer, so it's more available for use. So proof of work is a mechanism that allows the centralized Ethereum networks to become two consensus on agree on things like account balances and order of transactions. This prevents users from double spending their coins and ensures that Ethereum chain is tremendously difficult to attack or manipulate. Proof of work and mining. Proof of work is an underlying algorithm that sets the difficulty and rules for the work miners do. Mining is the work itself. It's the act of adding valid blocks to the chain. This is important because the chain's length helps the network follow the correct Ethereum chain and understands Ethereum's current state. The more work done, the longer the chain, the higher the block number, the more certain the network can be of the current state of things. The proof of work protocol eHash requires miners to go through an intense race of trial and error to find the nonce for a block. Only blocks with a valid nonce can be added to the chain. When racing to create a block, the miner must will repeatedly put a data set that you can only get from downloading and running the full chain. As the miner does through the mathematical function, the data set gets used to generate a mix hash below a target noise as dictated by the block difficulty. The best way to do this is through trial and error. The difficulty determines the target of the hash. The lower the target, the smaller the set of valid hashes. Once generated, this is incredibly easier, easy for the miners and clients to verify. Even though one transaction will were to change, the hash would be completely different, signaling fraud. That was the proof of work thing is that, I mean, you might be able to in, enter in incorrect information, but there are so many people checking it that it would be noticed and detected quickly. Hashing makes fraud easy to spot, but proof of work as a process is a big deterrent to attacking the chain. I'm going to kind of skip ahead to the finality. A transaction has finality on Ethereum when it's part of a block that can be changed. Because miners work in a decentralized way, two valid blocks can get mined at the same time. This creates a temporary fork. Eventually, one of these chains will become the accepted chain after a subsequent block has been mined and added, making it longer. But com to complicate things further, the transactions rejected on the temporary fork may have been included in the accepted chain. This means that it means it could get reversed. So finality refers to the time when you should wait before considering transaction and irreversible. For Ethereum, the recommended time is six blocks or just over one minute. After six blocks, you can say with relative confidence that the transaction was successful. You can wait longer for even greater assurances. Finality is something to bear in mind when designing dApps. It would be poor user experience to misrepresent transaction information of, to your users, especially if the transaction is of how, high value. Remember the timing doesn't include wait times for having transaction picked up by miner. So probably sh what I should have skipped to is this, is the pros and cons. Proof of work is neutral. You don't need Ethereum to get started and block rewards allow you to go from zero ETH to positive balance. With proof of stake, you need ETH to start with. Proof of work is a tried, tested consensus mechanism that has kept Bitcoin, Ethereum secure and decentralized for many years. Compared to proof of stake, it's relative easy to implement. Cons. Proof of work uses so much energy, which is just repeated and repeated. It's bad for the environment. 
If you want to mine, you need such specialized equipment that it's big investments to start. I know uh, it's just things have progressed, things have grown in this world so much that there's so many people that are doing this and it's, we want to grow more. So just to do, to progress to where we can manage this better, they want to go to proof of stake, which makes sense. Do the increasing computation needed, mining pools have potentially dominated the mining game, leading to centralized in security risk. So what it's talking about is like, and so you would have to have a huge group of people and, or like you'd have to have such specialized computers and everything. Um, it was really expensive. So what ended up happening was you had a bunch of people that would team up kind of together and use the resources to kind of be able to do the mining. And because you had groups of people, it made it to where there was people working together. So it became to where it was a team and the team basically made it centralized. And it, I mean, it just led to security risks as it says. So when we're comparing proof of stake, at a high level, proof of stake has the same end goal as proof of work to help decentralized network reach consensus securely, but it has differences in process and personnel. Proof of stake switches it out of the importance of compu com computational power for state Ethereum. Proof of stake replaces miners with validators. Validators stake their Ethereum to activate the ability to create new blocks. So like I said, Basically what they're doing is they're going to put up about 32 Ethereum, which is like $100,000 last time I checked. And I mean, it's going to, it's pretty expensive. I think there's something that they have now that uh, you can actually go in with someone and then it's, it's not like where you have to have $100,000. Uh, it might be easier in other neighborhoods, but where I'm at, that's, that's quite a bit besides the point. <laughs> Validators don't compete to create blocks, instead are chosen random by the algorithm. Finality is clear at certain checkpoints. If two-thirds validators agree on the state of the block, it is considered final. Validators must bet, this is them putting forth their Ethereum, their entire stake on this. So if they try to collude, collude down the line, they lose their entire stake. So I'm going to go over this too so we can just get everything out there. So proof of stake comes with a number of importance, improvements to the proof of work system. Better energy efficiency. You don't need to use lots of energy mining blocks. Don't need those specialized computers as much, I guess, and for the year and a half or whatever it is. Lower barriers to entry, reduced hardware requirements. You don't need elite hardware to stand a chance in creating new blocks. These blocks are the things that hold the transactions, in case I haven't mentioned that. Stronger immunity to centralization. Proof of stake should lead to more nodes in the network. Stronger support for shard chains. A key upgrade. I'm trying to make sure that I don't give you guys something that I've said three times. These separate blockchains will need validators to process transaction and create new blocks. The plan is to have 64, uh, 64 shard chains with each having a shard understanding of state of the network. As a result, extra coordination is necessary and will be done by the beacon chain. The beacon chain receives state information from shards and makes it available for other shards, allowing the network to stay in sync. The beacon chain will also manage the validators from registering their state deposits and issuing re their rewards, because they will be rewarded for all their work, or stake and penalties they'll have rewards and penalties so 
If a validator isn't chosen to propose a new shard block, they'll have to attest to another validator's proposal and confirm that everything looks as it should. It's the uh, attestation that is recorded in the beacon chain rather than the transaction itself. At least 128 validators are required to attest to each shard block. This is known as a committee. A committee has time frame in which to propose and validate a shard block. This is known as a slot. Only one valid block is created per slot, and there is 32 slots in an e <laughs> After each epoch, the committee is disbanded and reformed with different random participants. This helps keep the shards safe from committees of bad actors. So this is the security. It gives you more validity. It should it shouldn't make it to where you're not just having people being able to commit fraud. Not that proof of work made that available, but this just makes it more secure. In theory. Now, like I'm not an expert on all this. I most definitely recommend you check out the site and you check out other things that might go against what they're claiming this will all be. Just kind of get your overall knowledge, you know. The more you know, the more you're able to make wise decisions. Uh, don't just trust me or anyone you have just find, you know. Go through a process. The more you know, the more you can be confident in the decisions you make. And, you know, you're not going to be sweating as much. <laughs> so, just do your own research, I ask. <laughs> It all comes to you and what you have to make for your decisions for yourself. In distributed networks, a transaction has finality, which it, it's part of the block that can't change. To do this in proof of stake, Casper, a finality protocol, ha gets validators to agree on the state of the block at certain checkpoints. So long as two-thirds of the validators agree the block is finalized, validators will lose their entire stake. Their entire stake. If they try and revert this letter on a via a 51% attack. So, I guess it says right here. As Vald Zafar put it, this is like a miner participating in a 51% attack, causing their mining hardware to immediately burn down. This, I mean, this is going to continue as the security. The threat of a 51% attack still exists in the proof of stake. I'm going to click this and so we can... So, 51 attack refers to attack on a blockchain, commonly... Bitcoin for such an attack to it, this attack is hypothetical by a group of miners controlling more than 50% of the mining hash rate or computing power. So, so a 51% attack. Um, this this is dealing with the computing power. So you have one that's uh, one you have to worry about. I believe is the proof of work is that you have to worry about computing power. On a proof of stake, I think you have to worry about uh, owning 51%, 50, more than 50% of the overall supply. So the attackers would be able to, um, I'm continuing now, the attackers would be able to prevent new transactions from gaining confirmations, allowing computing 51% attack, allowing them to halt payments between some or all users. They would also be able to reverse transactions that were completed while they were in control of the network, meaning they could double spend tokens. This would almost certainly not be able to create new coins or alter old blots. A 51% would probably not destroy Bitcoin or any other block-based currency outright, even if it's proved highly damaging. Okay, so... 
here's something. Krypton and Shift, two blockchains based on Ethereum, suffered 51% attacks in August 2016. In May 2018, Bitcoin Gold, the second of the 26 largest cryptocurrencies, suffered a 51% attack. The malicious actor or actors controlled a vast amount of the Bitcoin's gold's hash power, computing power, such as that even Bitcoin Gold repeatedly uh, attempting to raise the exchange thresholds, the attackers were able to double spend for several days, eventually stealing more than 18 million worth of Bitcoin Gold. Bitcoin Gold was hit again in 2020. Recently, BSB has suffered an attack in August 2021. So I believe this is all doing with computing. So basically, uh, yeah, mining hash rate. So I believe this is based off the computer's ability to do the algorithms. If you have most of the computing power or over half, then you, you could hypothetically start making it to where you could double spend. Let's go back to here. Not only is there a lot of money that, but it would probably cause Ethereum value to drop if there was an attack. There's very little incentive to destroy the value of a currency you have have a majority stake in. There are stronger incentives to keep the network secure and healthy. So like I said before, before it was just like people were getting paid for proof of work. But with proof of stake, they have their... They have something to risk. They have something out there. And if they misuse their power or whatever, then they will lose what they have. Stake slashing, ejections, and other penalties coordinated by the beacon chain will exist to prevent other acts of bad behavior. Validators will also be responsible for flagging these incidents. So you also have to worry about other people doing what you're doing. Um catch it on to what you did. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go through the pros and cons, and obviously they got more pros than cons, and this is the reason we're going this direction. Staking makes it easier for you to run a nod node. It doesn't require huge investments in hardware or energy, and if you don't have enough ETH to stake, you can join staking pools. Okay. So there's something to think about. Staking, of course, I believe that they already had people register for all this, so I don't think uh, there's there's going to be a line. <laughs> Staking is more decentralized. It allows for increased participation, and more nodes doesn't mean increased percentage returns like with mining. So staking allows for more secure sharding. Shard chains allow ethereum to create multiple blocks at the same time increasing transaction throughput sharding the network in a proof of work system would simply lower the power needed to compromise a portion of the net okay so how i'm understanding this and of course write in the comments let me know so i can correct it is that uh so you're able to do multiple blocks at a time, which is like groups of transactions, uh, more than you could with proof of work. All right. So the cons of proof of stake is it's still in its infancy, less battle tested compared to proof of work. I mean, anytime you have to upgrade, anytime you're doing something, in order to progress, you always have to test something out new, which means there's risk of failure. And that's basically what they're saying. There's a risk of failure, but from every these are smart people, a lot smarter than me. <laughs> so I'm sure they thought about a lot of things, but I, I believe they're rolling out in a manner that I mean, this thing has been delayed multiple times. So you know they're doing everything they can to make sure it's accurate. I mean, this is their business, <laughs> or this is a lot of people's work. All right. That's kind of funny. <laughs> All right. So let's go to the next branch. Let's 
I guess we're gonna make this video pretty long. <laughs> All right, let's make sure I covered everything in here. So to reflect, the merge is the part where the two parallels kind of, you can go from the way it was to the way it is to be. And the mergers, like I said, it's supposed to happen this year. Of course, they could always uh, push it back, but it's supposed to be June or August from what I'm hearing. So this last piece is supposed to be estimated 2023. Shard chains will expand Ethereum's capacity to process transactions and store data. The shards themselves will gain more features over time, rolled out in multiple phases. Sharding is a multiple phase upgrade to improve Ethereum scalability and capacity. Shard chains provide extra cheaper storage layers for applications and rollouts to store data. They enable two layer or layer two solutions to offer low transaction fees and leveraging the security while leveraging the security of Ethereum. This upgrade is planned to follow the merge of the Mene with the beacon chain. Transaction fees is one of the biggest complaints I've seen about Shibi, or not Shibi, about uh, Ethereum and all those on the blockchain is, I've seen it jump and lower, you know, based on what time you use. Uh, it's very exciting for me personally that this is uh, gonna offer lower transaction fees. I mean, it's nothing like, having a little bit of Shibi in you and then you try to ship it and then like they, the gas fees might be even more than what you have or just as much. That doesn't happen often, but depends on how much you have, I guess. If it would equate to as much or more than what you're trying to send. So sharding is the process of splitting the database horizontally to spread the load. It's a common concept in computer science. In an Ethereum context, sharding will reduce the network congestion and increase transactions per second by creating new chains known as shards. This is an important reason. This is important for reasons other than scalability. So this is some exciting things. Sharding is a good way to scale if you want to keep things decentralized as the Alternative to, is to scale by increasing the size of the existing database. This would make Ethereum less accessible for network validators because they need they need to they need powerful and expensive computers. With shard chains, validators only need to store run data for the shard they're validating, not the entire network, like it happens today. So. <laughs> they're do they've been doing it off the entire network and now they're they're just gonna have to do for the shard chains it looks like yep this speeds up things drastically or right. and this speeds up things and drastically reduces hardware requirements charting will eventually let you run ethereum and on a personal laptop or phone phone <laughs> think about that i mean and even when this is all rolled out phones will be even more powerful so that'll be more possible i guess so more people should be able to participate or run clients in a sharded ethereum this will increase security because the more decentralized the network the smaller the attack surface area the lower the hardware requirement sharding will make it easier to run clients on your own without relying on any intermediary services at all. And you can, if you can consider running multiple clients, this can help network health by further reducing points of failure. I'm gonna try to wrap this up. By the time additional shards are added, Ethereum and they will already be secured by the beacon chain using proof of stake. This enables a fertile 
and they to build shard chains off of powered by layer two solutions and supercharge the scalability. It means to be seen. It remains to be seen whether Mane will exist as only smart shard that can handle the code execution. But either way, the decision to expand shards can be revisited as needed. That's good to know, right? All right, well, that's a lot of the information I have. Um, I'm going to just do a rundown of what I think I know. There we got the parallel of how it was or how it is now and how it's going to be. They just need to move it over, basically. Um, when the merge happens, then you'll basically have the, that's when the validators come in. And instead of having miners, you're going to have validators. They're going to have skin in the game. They're going to have their Ethereum state, which depending on the situation, because you, I mean, it says that you'll rather have like 32 Ethereum put up or you'll have to have a team or a pool of them that are going to be with you. But either way, if they start trying to manipulate or fraud, commit fraud on the chain, then it's going to cause them to lose what they have. So before, when they were getting paid in the old system, they were getting paid and there wasn't the skin in the game. They didn't have much at risk. So now they do. So it's so the merge is also going to cause this um, stability or uh, sustainability. It's going to use less energy. We're going to, they're going to be able to start going to where they can do more transactions with the shard chains. You're going to have better for the environment. You're going to have um, uh, more secure. You're going to have scalability. I mean, these are things that we're going to need to do to progress. We just, cryptocurrency is growing so much that we're going to have to make these changes. And I believe that it's going to pay off in the end. So what do you think? Do you think Ethereum's the way to go? I mean, obviously on their website, they have very few, like no negatives. And they have all these positives of proof of stake. What's your opinion? Is there anything that you're thinking about that you're wondering about? Anything uh, that I <laughs> misrepresented? Anything that you noticed that might need correction? Uh, I really appreciate this view. I've I've gone into double. Di if you're not subscribed yet, I ask that you subscribe, like, comment, share, um, and I'll keep bringing stuff to you as often as I can. Um, this is Crypto Dream. It's not only my dream, it's my dream for you. It's our dream. Let's make this dream a reality.